Well, good morning. It's always good to, uh, to come to uh, church on Sunday morning, praise and worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe He inhabits our praise. Our praise and worship allows the Holy Spirit to come and to start working on us and where we'll be ready and available to receive His Word. His Word is what brings life and what brings death. If we believe that His Word will not return void, then that's exactly what we believe. We believe that His life will speak to, or His Word will speak life or death to us whatever we choose to receive it as. I hope and pray that you receive it as life this morning. We're going to be in Proverbs in the third chapter, starting in the first verse. But what we're going to talk about this morning is something that we all need and we all want. I don't know about y'all, but at least that's true in my life. I'm going to assume it's true in yours. I don't see that you're much different than me, except for maybe size and hair color. But in the end, we all need the same things, right? We all need Jesus Christ. We all need his mercy, his grace, his forgiveness, and his truth. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. You know, his commands really boil down to just a couple, right? Love him, love your neighbor. Next verse. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. That sounds pretty good to me. I want, I want to live a long time. I want to have peace here on this earth while I'm here. But aside of the length of days on this earth, what about eternity? If I keep his laws, if I keep his commands, I can live for eternity through Jesus Christ. Next verse. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. This is, this is the heart of the message this morning. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Don't let it leave. Let it always be with you. In every moment, in every situation in your life, no matter what you're going through, maybe it's a storm, maybe it's a struggle, maybe it's a divorce, maybe no matter what you're going through, do not let mercy and truth forsake you. Maybe you're caught up in sin. Maybe you're addicted to drugs or alcohol or whatever, whatever may have a hold of you. Do not let mercy and truth forsake you. Because I promise you this, that if Jesus Christ is calling you, if his spirit is inside of you right now, working on you, convicting you of your sins, or, or letting you know that whatever you're going through is going to be okay, do not let mercy and truth forsake you. How many of us want mercy in our life? I do. If I get pulled over by the police, I won't even have mercy on me. I don't want that ticket. I need mercy. I need mercy most of all from God. And I recognize that. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. They should go with you always. You know, I think a lot of times we as Christians, we get caught up in coming to church, maybe reading our Bible and just kind of skimming over it and flipping the pages. And, you know, we, we forget about God's mercy and we forget about God's truth. You know, we find ourselves entangled in sin again and we think, oh, Lord, you're not going to forgive me this time. But he tells us, hey, my, my mercy endures forever. All we have to do is come back to him. Next verse. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Now if there's one thing that I long for in my life, it's God's favor, right? It's his grace. Because without God's grace, I have nothing. I am nothing without God's grace. 
So in order to find his grace, I need his mercy and truth. Let's go to Proverbs 16, 6. In mercy and truth, atonement is provided for iniquity. And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. If there was ever any gospel in Proverbs, this is it. This is the gospel of Jesus Christ wrapped up in one verse. In mercy and truth, in the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the one that came as a man. The God that came to earth as a man. Came and provided atonement for your sins. He lived a perfect, sinless life. Laid his life down on a cross. Shed his blood for your sins so that you could be forgiven. So that you could be taken care of. That was his mercy. And by the fear of the Lord, one departs from evil. So once we accept that mercy and that truth that God sent his one and only son as a man to die for your sins, for the things that you did wrong, for the way that you have rebelled against God... When we accept that, when we accept the atonement that he has provided for us through his son, we will then in turn fear him. Fear God. The almighty God, the one that made the heavens and the earth, the one that knit you together in your mother's womb. When we fear him, we will depart from our sins. We will repent. We'll have a different mindset. When we change our mind, we change our behavior. It's all about turning away from the world and turning towards God. But we can't do that on our own, can we? I don't have the strength within me to do that. Unless I have His Holy Spirit living inside of me. Go to John 3. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. This is mercy and truth together. They have came together and they have kissed. And they have come together in one person. One man. One son of God. One Messiah. One Savior. One Master. Jesus Christ. Next verse. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't send him to punish us the first go round. But that the world through him might be saved. I think a lot of times we stop with verse 16. And we never read further down, but there's a lot of, a lot of good stuff after verse 16. For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world. If you are living in sin right now, if you are having problems in your life right now, God did not send His Son to punish you right now. He sent His Son to save you. To give you mercy. To extend mercy and grace to you during this very hour. No matter what you are doing in this world, no matter how dark you think you are, no matter how evil you think you are, Jesus Christ came to save such as you. That is His mercy and His truth. But how many of us are willing to accept His mercy and truth? I think lots of times... We feel like, well, I'm ashamed. I'm not going to go up there. I'm not going to pray in that altar because then the people around me are going to know that I've done something bad. Well, I know you've done something bad whether you come up here and ask for forgiveness or not. The Bible tells me you have. The Bible tells me that I have. I'm not perfected yet. But like we talked about last week, I'm striving for that perfection. I want God Almighty to send His Spirit to live inside of me so that when I'm wrong, he'll convict me of it. When there's something in my mind, in my thoughts, that's not right, 
I can read His Word and He can convict me of it. And He can push me towards that perfection that I long for through Jesus Christ. But how many of us are willing to receive the mercy and truth that He has for us? How many of us understand that Jesus Christ came to save and not to condemn? Now there is a time that condemnation will come. But that's at his second coming. After you have rejected Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. But right now, the time that we live in, Jesus Christ came to save you. To offer you mercy, truth, his grace. Next verse. He who believes in him is not condemned. There is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you will come and you will accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, guess what? You escape the eternal punishment of hell. You escape the wrath of God that He has already poured out on His Son, Jesus Christ, for the sins of this world. He made Christ, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin, sin for you. He paid off your account if you'll receive it. He wiped the slate clean if you'll receive it. If you'll not forsake mercy and truth, everything that you have done has been forgiven. But he who does not believe is condemned already. The Bible says that the wrath of God is being stored up on you, upon your head. You're a dead man walking. The wrath of God is already hovering above you. If you are walking around without Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you are walking around forsaking the mercy and truth of God, because He has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. You know that song that He just sang? I believe. I believe what He sang. Do you? In your heart, in your mind, in your life, is that what you believe? Do you believe that Jesus Christ came to save you from your sins? Do you believe that He offers you forgiveness for your sins? Do you believe that He's sitting at the right hand of the Father right now, awaiting a time to come back and get those who follow Him? That's the question this morning. What do you believe? Do you believe in His mercy and truth? Are you willing to stand in the day of judgment and give an account to God Almighty? And when He says, how do you answer for yourself? Do you say, I answer with mercy and truth through Jesus Christ? Or do you say, well, I, I just didn't really believe you'd forgive me, God, so I just... I just for, forsook it you know I didn't didn't want it I didn't think I needed it didn't think you would give it to me whatever the reason may be I left it behind I let it go I didn't carry it with me I have one defense when I stand before God and that is Jesus Christ his son that he sent to pay for my sins that came to save me that came to save you if you will allow Next verse. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Hey, I've been there. Before I came to Jesus Christ, I was ashamed. I was ashamed of what I had done. I started mourning the things that I had done. Blessed are those who mourn. Mourn what? Mourn the sin that's in their life. If you're mourning over the sin that's in your life, guess what? The Holy Spirit's working on you. He is trying to call you out of that darkness. And He wants to call you into the marvelous light. That's what Scripture tells me. But how many of us would rather stay in our shame and in our guilt than to admit that we were wrong? We don't want to come to an Almighty God and say, You know what? I was wrong. 
But we have to. We need to. To receive His mercy. To receive His grace. I've got to... I've got to admit that I'm a sinner. That I have fallen short of God's holy standard. And that I can't achieve His holy standard on my own. I'm not strong enough. I'm not good enough on my own. But through His Son, Jesus Christ, I can stand before Him. Next verse. For everyone practicing evil hates the light and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed. Next verse. But he who does the truth comes to the light. Mercy and truth. Once we accept his mercy, we start living by his truth, by his word. We keep his commands. We depart from evil. That his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. How many of us can stand and say that, hey, everything I've done this past week has been done in God. I've did everything right. I've done nothing wrong. I don't have any sin in my life. Be careful. Be careful. Because the Bible tells me that we all have sin in our life. The Bible tells me that we all need forgiveness. Me included. I'm your preacher. I'm your pastor. I have sin in my life. I'm not perfect yet. I'm not ashamed to tell you that. But I will tell you that I want to be perfect. That I want His mercy. I want His truth. I want His forgiveness. I'm going to point you to the cross every step of the way. I'm going to read God's Word and God's Word is going to point me to the finished work of the cross and raise His being raised from the dead. That's where I'm going to point you every time. That's where his word points me every time. Walk out of the darkness into this light in which I'm calling you, into the truth, into my mercy, into my forgiveness, into eternal life, so that you can escape the punishment of hell, so that you can escape the wrath of God. Now let me tell you something. If you think the wrath of God is something that you, endure, you can endure, you're wrong. Because you can't. It's going to be horrible. It'll be the worst thing that you could ever imagine. If you stand before God Almighty one day and you hear the words, Depart from me, you worker of iniquity, I don't know you. Those words alone will crush you. They may not be doing to you much right now. But when he speaks them to you, when he's looking at you, and he speaks those words, when you realize, uh-oh, I've messed up. I should have received that mercy and truth that crazy preacher was talking about one day. Those words are going to crush you. Oh, but what about the words, enter in, my good and faithful servant? Those are going to lift you up. Those are the words I long to hear. Those are the words I want to hear. And those are the words I believe I will hear because I trust in Jesus Christ alone for my salvation. I have accepted the mercy and the truth. Go to Romans 4, 7 through 8. This is... This is really... I, I really like this. These two verses. It says, blessed are those whose lawless deeds are forgiven. Blessed. Full of joy. Happy. At peace. With God. Are those whose sins are forgiven. Now if that doesn't comfort you, I don't know what will. Next verse. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord shall not impute sin. Oh, praise the Lord, he doesn't charge my account with sin no more. Why, do you say? Because the blood of Jesus Christ has covered them. And I am robed, I am clothed in a robe of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ. He, didn't, he doesn't impute sin to me anymore, but he imputes his righteousness. 
I have no righteousness. My, my good deeds are as filthy rags. But he says, I will clothe you in righteousness that is acceptable before God. If you will accept my mercy and my truth. He says, I will change your position. I will change who you are. You'll no longer be a son of disobedience, but you will be a son of God, a child of God, an heir to the kingdom of God. But you can only have this if I wipe away your sins and I give you my righteousness. And you start living for me. You turn away from the ways of the world, from the dark and evil deeds that you're doing. Go to Hebrews 4. Jimmy, if you want. Seeing then that we have a great high priest. We, we have a high priest that is greater than any other priest that ever walked on the face of this earth. And his name is Jesus Christ. Who has passed through the heavens. He passed through the heavens. He came down to earth to pay your sin debt. He came down to earth to live a sinless life, to fulfill the law that I couldn't keep. After he lived that sinless life, he willingly laid down his life on a cross. His blood was shed for my forgiveness. His blood was shed for your forgiveness. The mercy of God at work that he would pour his wrath out on his one and only son so that I wouldn't have to take it. And not only that, but then he went into the grave. And on the third day he arose. He came out of that grave victorious over death. He defeated sin and he defeated death on the cross of Calvary. And he arose on the third day and then he went to heaven where he's there waiting a time to come back and get those who belong to him. They have accepted his mercy and truth. Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. If you believe in Jesus Christ, hold on to that. Hold on to the mercy. Hold on to the truth. Keep fighting. Keep holding on. Know that he will forgive you. Know that you have been forgiven. Know that you need to come and ask for forgiveness. Know that you need to repent. Know that you can't stay in the darkness. But if you're a true believer, you'll walk back into the light. And if you've never walked into the light and the Holy Spirit is calling you this morning, know that he's here. Jesus Christ is here and he's willing to give you that mercy. Next verse. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. He knows the struggle. He knows the pain. He knows what you're going through. Next verse. And as y'all stand, let us therefore come boldly. You know what? I can come boldly before God if I'm coming to Him through His Son, Jesus Christ. Through that high priest, through that one that had no sin, but yet was made sin for me. The one that died in my place. If I come to God through Him, I can come boldly. That I may obtain mercy. Mercy for what? For the things that you have done that you will be punished for if you do not ask for forgiveness. If you do not accept His Son, Jesus Christ, as your Lord and Savior. And I can find grace to help in the time of need. You've never, in, you've never been in such time of need as when you have unforgiven sin in your life. You need God's grace more than anything. I got one last verse. Proverbs 3, 5. Trust in the Lord. Stand on Him. With all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. You say, well, where does this fit in? 
Some of us think we have it figured out. Some of us think we're going to just slide right on into glory land, but it's not going to work that way unless you have accepted Jesus Christ. Unless you have received the mercy and truth into your life. Unless you have come and repented of your sins and asked for the forgiveness that Jesus Christ offers you through the cross. Don't lean on your own understanding, but trust in Him. So as Jimmy sings, and y'all examine yourself, allow the Holy Spirit to work inside of you. Allow Him to speak to you. If you feel that He's calling you out of that darkness, out of that sin, don't be ashamed to come forward. We have people that love you, that want to pray with you, that want to, want to talk with you. You're not going to be judged for coming to this altar and asking for forgiveness. Hey, we're going to rejoice with you. We're going to praise God with you. We're going to sing hallelujah. That one has came and found forgiveness. Hey, I sing for joy every day that Jesus Christ has forgiven me. But what are you singing for? What is your praise for? If it's not for the forgiveness of your sins, then I don't know why you're singing. 